This video will demonstrate how to do machine quilting using both a free machine embroidery foot and a zigzag foot. We'll do random stitches, quilting a motif, using seed stitch to create a negative space shape and finally using a zigzag foot to create a regular linear pattern. For this quilting demonstration I'm looking at two layers of a calico fabric and I have quite a thick um, polyester wadding on the inside. So the thicker the wadding the harder it is to actually stitch evenly and to hold all of the layers together. Pin layers together well keeping the pins flat as you pin. demonstration I am working with a darning foot or a free machine embroidery foot. This is the number 24 and it has a bouncing sole. So when I lower the foot and I'm ready to stitch, as I stitch the foot will go down to make contact with the feed dogs or the needle plate and then it will bounce back up again. So that leaves me free with my fabric to embroider and again as with all sewing, make sure the two threads are out towards the back of the machine and holding them in place as I get started with the first stitch or two. And I shouldn't need to adjust anything else on the machine. If anything needs to be adjusted, you may need to loosen the tension on the top of the machine. Hold the fabric reasonably taut. And the number 24 foot allows you to move the fabric right, left, forwards and backwards as if you were doing normal free machine embroidery. So just stitching random circles. I'm going to do a pattern similar to that across this fabric. So lifting the foot, making sure that the needle is in its highest position and then I should be able to move across the fabric so I'm going to place another circle here. is the finished piece with the squiggly circle shapes they're all different to each other that's the character of it it's got some nice little lines coming from it this is the front and this is the back so now this time around I have traced around a motif and I've traced using a water soluble pen so this line will disappear after I'm finished st stitching so again I'm going to use the free machine foot and I'm going to stitch around here but first of all I need to pin the layers of um, material together. Okay, and I'm going to put a pin here in the center as well. Okay, so by putting some pins in the center, it will just help to stop the fabric from moving around too much. Okay, so I am working again with the number 24 Bernina um, free machine embroidery foot or darning foot. And I'm working with black thread so that you can see what I'm doing. So placing the thread out towards the back of the machine. And again, I'm, I don't need to place the work in a hoop because it's quite taut with all of these layers that I'm working with. So it's okay to move it and um, just holding the fabric by the side. So I'll start maybe somewhere in the center. Okay, as a general guide, it can be good to work from the center out to prevent the work from creeping. Okay, so if I'm stopping, it's a good idea to lower the needle into the fabric. It will remember the position and um, 
I don't need to worry too much about following these lines exactly because this is a soluble pen. It will disappear in cold water when I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to hold the fabric a little bit closer to the foot. There's always a risk with all of this wadding in underneath that the fabric can start to creep on the top and it's going through quite happily underneath. So I'm just going to make an effort to hold the two layers close together. So I've just done a quick little back stitch here at the end just to finish off and then I'm going to move over and restart on the right hand side. Because the original lines were drawn on with a water soluble marker, a damp cloth like this is perfect for removing the lines. Okay, So the last thing to do then is simply to trim away any of the loose threads. So this is the finished piece, it's got some nice raised effects here in the centre. Nice and quilted effect, some nice shadow effects, and this is the back. In order to stitch a seed stitch pattern, stitch repetitive circular shapes, ideally trying to keep all of the little circle shapes similar in size. In this case, I'm keeping all of the seed stitching in the negative space only so that there will be no stitching in the flower shape itself. one then this was the side that I was stitching on this is the drawing um, I can check what it's going to look like here by looking at the back so I'm happy then to remove the lines and not stitch any I was contemplating stitching in here but I thought the straight lines might fight with all of these little curly ones And the last step then is just to trim any of the remaining floating threads from when I change directions with the stitching. It's by filling in the negative space I have quilted the remaining space. So it's a very slight quilted effect because on this one I was using that quite thin cotton batting on the inside. So, so for this next sample I've drawn some patterns again using the cold water soluble marker. So I have drawn some straight lines and some diagonal lines across the fabric and this will be a little bit more challenging to do with a normal foot. Now, so the best way to avoid curl is to do some of the stitching towards the centre in both directions and then to work from the centre out or to work from the centre, move over a section and then come back and fill in the lines in between. So I'm starting now on the... Um, center vertical line here. So holding the fabric out taut is the center line straight down so now I'm going to do the center diagonal line I've now got two lines in the fabric Skipping every second line can help to prevent the fabric from curling.
Okay, because the lines here were drawn with a soluble marker, a light pat or a rub with a damp cloth will remove all of the blue lines. The last thing to do here then is just to trim away all of the loose threads. This is the finished piece completed with the regular sewing foot. I did end up with one very small tuck here and uh, after that I realised if I held the fabric out that it was less likely to tuck. It's quite good in both directions and again some nice sort of shadow effects from that.